Well, today's turning into something of a disaster. And I'm just going to season them up, which is what they call chopped worm. Big carp, light line, one way ticket. It's a churn, it's Christ almighty, it's a churn. A hair grip, a bunch of worms, a hook and a shot. Oh my goodness. I've got just a single worm on there. Christ, he only just goes in. That's a nice looker. Be nice when they get bigger. Well, today's turning into something of a disaster. I wanted to get her at 12, it's nearly three o'clock. Wife wants me to pick her up, to drop her off somewhere, a station or something like that, see her friends. I've got two hours, I'm gonna be pushed to catch anything. I'm trying for a perch, people. I'm here at Watmore Fishery. They've got a match on over the other side, you see them lined up over there, and I just come in, in this corner, because I quite fancied it, because the lilies are going well there. Oh, beautiful yellow lilies. They've done really well. Um, I'm going to fish off the corner there, I think I might do a second swim down here. So I've got to crack on and get something in the water very fast. I've only got worms for bait. So, I'm going to get a load of worms like this. And I'm just going to scissor them up, which is what they call chopped worm for perch. It's pretty standard. Perhaps not so great for the worms. But that's what's going to happen to them. I've got a few in there loose, but this way the juice goes into the ground bait, just chop them up like this. That's it. Standard match fishing technique, chop worm for perch, as is worm anyway. A little bit of ground bait, I don't want much ground bait, otherwise Mr. Carp's gonna poke his nose in. And I figure just across the edges there, maybe I'll try one under that overhang, if I was a perch, I wouldn't mind being under there, out the way. And I would think, looking at this swim, not many people would fish here. I'm squeezing these balls up fairly tight, so that uh, the roach don't tow them off. Otherwise, along comes a small roach, grabs his worm and tows it off halfway across the lake to eat it. So this way, you know, they've got to break them open a bit. Could even get perch close in down there, but. I'm just traditional places, the edge of the lilies, overhangs and stuff like that. And then, got the whole job, float fishing. I might actually put a link ledger down there to save me time because I'm really, really under the cosh for time. Been a drizzly sort of day, I had a lot of rain this morning, which we need desperately. I don't know if I can catch anything in two hours, I don't know. That's about the shortest session I've ever had. Um, here at Watmore. I think I'll put the link ledger out first. Well, everything in my whole life seems a rush. I don't know why. Why should that be? I might actually use a quiver tip rod. Right? We're getting ready to go sea fishing in a minute. Even rod, quiver tip, six pound line straight through. I'm not going to mess around. I don't think I need any any uh, ultralight hook lengths here and obviously I'm in the proximity of those lilies which is uh, big carp, light line, one way ticket. Bear with me while I set up. I just got a barbless hook and a treble A shot about 15 inches from the hook. I'm not going to use in rubber vest, I'm going to be using my trolley with its attachments. I have to have a rod rest in one side. Hmm. Let's have a look, see what we can sort out here. I'm going to be using my uh, hair grip for a bobbin indicator. 
they're the worms left over they've been fucking a week or 10 days old those and they still look okay i'm off the wind here so i'm hoping that the uh, sound's okay i'm almost running to get this done Now they could get a lot of small perch in here, so I'm going to probably go for double worms. Just pop them both up over the eye of the hook. Like that. Just drop it right down where I put the grass. It's almost alone it in the water job. Just there, put it underneath where that a bit sticking out it's a bit annoying but just gonna rest that there I bet I can go a little bit forward put the bobbin on that's not snaggy is it it should be good but being what more it's important that you keep this reel on back wine in case you get what you call a churner otherwise it's goodbye rod now the slightly longer job of putting a float rod together it's a churn it's Christ almighty it's a churner oh, oh my god I'm up there looking for the float rod people that's ridiculous it's obviously a not a perch. Get my rug. That is stupid. The handle was flying round. Obviously a carp. Wow, it's a bit common. Oh no. Let's hope you don't go in those lilies. Probably lose him under this uh, load of rubbish here. Look at that. If he gets in that, what I call spear blade stuff, it's generally all over. And that's what he's trying to get into. He might kick his way out. I haven't even got my mat ready, look. Further with me. Ooh, that didn't taste too clever. might get lucky. Wow, all that. Yeah, he's throated that lot. And he's in. Oh my goodness me. Is that not a turn up? That must be the fastest I've caught a fish this year, I should think. There's the worms. Looks about six to me. Let's get him straight back because I want to perch. I purposely didn't put a lot of ground bait in. You saw what I put in. A matter of minutes. That's ridiculous. Covered in slime and I've been here minutes. Not even two minutes that went in. I don't think that bait was in there a minute. I'm going to leave those there. Well. I think we've pulled some fresh worms. I still think I'm going for double worms. They're putting that horse there on a train, it's called a lunge rain. Because we used to do horse training years ago. My grandfather's actually a top horse racing trainer in his time and my dad was a horse race trainer in his later years as well so I know the front end of a horse and my back so I know it's a lunge rein because I've done lunge horse, horses with lunging what a good job I had that on back wine that's all I can say Is that Rob was on the way Oh Jesus, that's a turner. 
you're kidding me. You are absolutely kidding me, folks. That was as it happened. That's ridiculous. I put a tiny piece of ground bait in there. And nobody's fishes swim by the look of it. Look at it, it's all overgrown. Read the water. That is unbelievable. Oh, he's come off. That was a bloody good carp, boys. Carp, my French. That was a low double. I can't believe that. Looks about six to me. Let's get him straight back because I want to perch. I purposely didn't put a lot of ground bait in. You saw what I put in. A matter of minutes. That's ridiculous. Covered in slime and I've been here minutes. Not even two minutes that went in. I don't think that bait was in there a minute. I'm going to leave those there. Well, oh, I think we've pulled some fresh worms. I still think I'm going for double worms. They're putting that horse there on a train, it's called a lunge rain. Because we used to do horse training years ago. My grandfather's actually a top horse racing trainer in his time. And my dad was a horse race trainer in his later years as well. So I know the front end of a horse from the back, so I know it's a lunge rein. Because I've done lunge horse, horses with lunging. What a good job I had that on back wine. That's all I can say. That rod was on the way. Oh Jesus, that's a turner. You're kidding me. You are absolutely kidding me, folks. That was as it happened. That's ridiculous. I put a tiny piece of ground bait in there. And nobody's fishes swim by the look of it. Look at it, it's all overgrown. Read the water. That is unbelievable. Oh, he's come off. That was a bloody good carp, boys. Carp, my French. That was a low double. I can't believe that. Well, I'm hoping you got that on camera because that is what we call a churn of old school. Ridiculous. Well, I fear the perch aren't on the cards too much, people. But I hadn't even got the rod out of the out of the damp holder. That is ridiculous. You've got them on wood tops. Definitely not using the match rod. I wonder if I should ledger that. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that is absolutely ludicrous. Third carp hooked up in what, five minutes? Got a bend in this quiver top rod. A hair grip, a bunch of worms, a hook and a shot. In the margins. That tells you winter's on its way. Oh, fire, and I was moaning, coming away really ticked off because I only had two hours fishing. Well, I might visit this room again before I put my film up, to be honest. I'm going to have to move that one twig there, this one. There, I'm going to have to move that one. Have you got a match on over there? Throwing loads of bait in, so why are the carp here? I've got no chance of getting a, a perch, I should think. 
I'm not even going to bother rigging float up, guys. I'm not going to rig. I'm going to put a ledger over there as well. My wrist is aching from 22 catfish I caught the other evening. So I can't overdo it. Cause... I want to keep them away from the lilies. But I want to, if, if possible, and that's always pulling me out now. Oh dear, I don't want him kiting left. I'll turn his head. Look at the rod. I hope we've got enough space on the camera. Probably a common. I don't get a huge number of mirrors in what I seem to have a lot of commons. That's why they're called a common, I suppose. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. I might be underestimating this fish a bit. I have to take my time with this, might be. I want to say fish of the day, fish of the afternoon, fish of the 10 minutes. Let's take a look at it now. Having said that, it looks like a mirror. Well, I'm blowed. He's in. I kid you not, folks. That one is about... Well, he's certainly around the 10. Back he goes. Put him this side. Gone. I'm soaked. I, can't, I haven't even sat down. I oh, want dare I throw a pinch of ground bait in. They love that chopped worm, didn't they? Oh my god. I'm going to use the same. I still haven't got that rod put together. I'm going to use the same box of worms. Sink the line. I'm almost shaking now. There's a bite. I kid you not, people, that was a bite. I don't think I'm going to get to the rod. I'm frightened to look away. This is why I always suggest having the reel on back wind. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Pardon my French. That is ridiculous. That is unbelievable. I'm gonna get snagged up here in a minute for certain. They know those reeds and rushes are there. They know where the snakes are, look where he's gone. I've never, since I've come to Watmore, caught four fish as fast as, or hooked up four fish as fast as this, I've got three. Well, I haven't got this one yet, but you saw the take, hopefully. Okay, he wants to go back up under here on the right, that sort of spear bladey stuff. Oh my goodness. This is close to nine or ten pounder. I don't even cast in that, so I don't think we're going to get there. I'm going to bring this camera off just for a second, I think, because I'm not sure how much memory card on it. I've charged the battery up, but honestly, you don't know about the memory card.
It's just strange how they want to go that way rather than the lilies. He's going right out. It's a nice fish, that one. I bought my perch net. I've gone to a carp fight with a perch net. Is that the same? From that film. Don't bring a don't bring a knife to a gunfight type of thing. Another mirror. I think he's he might be a tad bigger people. That's just crackers. What the same fish is it? Suicidal Sam. Oh, fell out. Lovely mirror, I'm putting him around the tens. I'm not gonna weigh him because it's a manic day. Right, look. You couldn't want any better than that if you were a big perch or any fish. Now that piece of sticking out's dropped or sunk so I can just lower that down there. I should be strapped in here somewhere. It's not normal, is it? It's not normal, folks. It's not normal. Bites on. I had a bite on. <laughs> can't even put it in the... That is madness. I'm leaving the camera running this time. And of course you can see you need all this complicated carp gear, don't you? All the gear and no idea, is it? There's, there's fish banging that. There's nobody used worms here before. that forward to there. I've got quite a few worms, let me just chuck some in there loose. Smith, watch that rod. My god, that's the longest I've been here without getting a take. So if you're a beginner, you must have heard me say loads of times, if you are looking away or you're margin fishing, or indeed any fishing, you might, if you're not literally virtually holding the rod, or on a bait run, you might want to put it on back wine for safety. Because I'm hitting these fish half a rod length out. It might seem the way to go for perch, but... I think it's a little point. The state of that tip ring. I've got just a single worm on there. Shot, I'm just going to try it in this swim. I can't put a buzzer there because you can't put uh, bank sticks in. And that's where I baited up in the other side because they could have gone from that swim to that swim after those fish. Again. I've got no buzzer. See a little fish just jumped there so they could be perch and I'm figuring I'll put this just down there. I do the gardening. As if I don't do enough weeding at home. So this one I could be watching the bobbin. That one I can actually hear. I chopped up a little bit more as you can see. I've only got long, so I'm just going to give him a pinch. It's a bit close, that one. I'm going to drop that down again. Yes, worms off, look. See, I thought it was strange we didn't have a bite. 
There. there we go. Oh, that could have been a perch. I'm on. Oh, I think that was a perch. I think that was a perch. Son of a gun. Oh, he's, he's on, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. It's a churner. Oh man, that don't feel like a carp. That does not feel like a carp. Okay, it does feel like a carp. No, it doesn't feel like a carp. Oh dear. Oh my God, it can't be. Can it be? I've got a loop here somewhere. It's not good news. I think I got it off. I'm not sure what, what the hell has happened. He's, he's on, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. It's a churner. Oh man, that don't feel like a carp. That does not feel like a carp. Okay, it does feel like a carp. No, it doesn't feel like a carp. Oh dear. Oh my God, it can't be. Can it be? I've got a loop here somewhere. It's not good news. I think I got it off. I'm not sure what, what the hell has happened. Might be a bream. No, it's, it could be a perch. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a little carp. No, I'm not really into little carp. Pasties. I thought it was a nice perch, to be honest, but don't want to appear disappointed, but obviously. I don't really want to be catching these keys all day. Pretty little fish, but wrong size. Or well, right size of a perch. Once more into the depths of barely a rod length out. Almost frightened near to go near it with it. That's good. I'd like to be able to bump that bait just once. Right, we're set again. Pinch of ground bait in that other swim. My God, dare I put the seat near me? There's every chance if I could a decent cover, I could get dragged in at this angle. Well, that was bizarre getting those fish like that. That's the setup. Gone quiet there now. I must have just dropped straight on a shoulder, it was just laying under there or something. I don't know whether you're allowed to put a. I can't see how you can get a buzzer on there. I've got the arm, if you can see that on my barrow, that I've made an adaptation for exactly this. Well, four, four carp and that small carp, five. Hopefully I've got time for something else. Here we go. Look, 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 look. That was perchy. That was a sort of perchy take, that one. I'm going to leave it running. A quiver tip rod. Look, 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 look. look. A quiver tip rod, a buzzer, a hair grip, and back wind. A, that's a drop back. A front holder that's got attached to my barrow, and a broken up old tripod that I glue together to make a rear. Oh. See, that's where we've got no buzzer on that one. Got to be watching everything. 
I might have to put one right in the corner there. I think a bigger perch would have moved off with that. A tiny perch, I think. It's hard to believe that uh, I've not fished a swim before. I think I won in the corner I caught one carp years ago. I've certainly not fished this, you know, this little couple of swims here, and it's grown up so much. Better look, got a nice feature there. Feature of the lilies. Overhanging spear blade, which obviously in peak summer will be upright, but it's one assumes falling over coming into this, you know, autumn's time. <clears throat> and I think they call that the north bank. So this is sort of westerly wind is going to be coming this way. So ideal for float fishing if it's under prevailing conditions, this corner. Look, not to say with the fish are always here, is what they do say with the carp is they're going to be on the wind over there. You need to fish with the wind in your face. I would say perhaps not because I haven't got any wind in my face. Not that I know of. Nearly. These would probably be the very small perch. Yeah, there's one on this one as well. Well, if I put the rod out, a rod length out, I'd be too far. It's a half a rod length out I'm fishing. They did seem to go bad when I put two worms on there. I'm on single worms at the moment. There we go, another little twitch on this one. And you can make adjustments by just moving the spool up and down. You know, if you want to bring it in a bit, you want to keep pace with anything. I notice with, he's still there, it's a small perch I'd say. With a single, oh, he's going up and down up here. <laughs> with a single handed wheel like this, you want the weight of the handle on the bottom, otherwise you put the bobbin where you want it, and the handle will slowly rotate under its own weight and pull the bobbin up too short, or indeed it might be at the back, and rotate and put the bobbin on the floor. The double handled twin ones here are better balanced, you can move them anywhere and uh, you know they don't disturb your bite indication. I've no idea whether that's what the double handle is for but it's handy. Well it's a handle, it's handy, a handy. Well, I've made a rash decision of uh, taking my jumper thing off. I'll put, oh, I keep getting little twitchy ones on there. It's a shame I can't put a buzzer. I've got to come up with a way. Maybe so they call them a bulldog clip or a terry clip and clamp it with a super glue, drill and super glue or tape a V rod rest holder to it so I can just clamp it on there. I was literally thinking about it and that way I don't have to mess around with my barrow here. If I could fold an old rod rest with the screw thread like those, I suppose I could almost use something like these backrests. I never use them as backrests. And that might be an idea for anybody who's you know you're not allowed to put rubber rests in or you, you clamp them on the on the edge i made some little blocks once that we screwed on in xander films and uh, they're handy for conga fishing up a piers and things like that if you're fishing with a bite indicator nothing you see nothing i think they're small perch guys i think i'm gonna before my chair collapses put that sweater thing back on because not so much to keep warm it's partly that but i caught fish with that on there so is it like a a juju thing is it, you know no <laughs> it's not i missed it again but i think i'm going to put it on because it could be good luck we'll find out won't we i was right about the jumper guys i put it on 30 seconds it took Sounds like the man delivering my ground by that truck. No big ones on that side, huh? Strange. See, my wrist is going to get a, a pasting. Here comes Andy, the man who's ruining my wrist with his bloody fish. I've been here minutes, Andy. I have four in four drops here. Trying for a perch, it's, it's yeah. honestly ludicrous. I've never had four. Good job by the reel on backwind. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, just on bunches of worms. Really? 
I think it's just sort of no and swim just out of it. I mean, I've I come here to get off the wind, and then I. Don't I really get fished a great deal, Brian, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I'll come back. <laughs> right, see you in a minute, mate. Okie doke. We can see even on something like this, there could be little spots that as Ash is not really fish for very much, maybe. Who knows? It could be the features, I'm pretty sure it's the features, like this and the lilies. And the jumper I'm wearing, obviously. That's another nice common. I'm not joking, guys, they're all nines. Nines plus is just on the borderline, just on the edge. And the magic tin. I purposely didn't bring my scales. Or oh, I think I got the scales, not the way bag. I thought, well, I'm only going to perch fishing. They're probably going to be a pound or something like that if I got a good one. And I purposely never fed a load of ground bait. So, but what can you do? You get great sport with carp. I suppose I'd sooner have these than absolutely nothing for sure. Especially this size. It's not like those small ones. I think I should put myself in that match. Christ, he only just goes in. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous fishing. Double worms and a grey sweater. I'd say that fish is every bit annoying. That's a nice looking one. In good nick. Oh yeah, that's annoying. Nine and a half to ten. I would suggest anybody's money. Now wait a minute, mate. My wrist is so short, it's ridiculous. Net's got to be just tilted. Just tilted at that angle. People think I'm joking. Trust me, I'm not. Get a selection of silver paper as well. Depending on what I want to use. Let's try a bit of silver paper. And well, where's that off of the... I had that balanced on there, maybe I knocked it with my leg. All right, back one, good. Wowee. Couple, couple more, even carp and a perch would be brilliant, absolutely brilliant for two hours. The ladyship's going to be on the phone shortly saying, you've forgotten to pick me up, have you? Well, it's living dangerously if the fishing's this good, and that it's living dangerously, because you know, you guys know I am going to cut that time as close to the knuckle as I can. I bet she's running to the car. I'll be running from the house if, I, uh, if she misses her meeting with her mates. Got a fish on the left-hand rod, guys. Oh, I thought it was a perch a minute. No, it is. Either one of those small carp, or, oh, it's a bream. There we go. Let's have a look at him. He proves the roach that big. And there are indeed roach that size in here. Hard to believe, don't flick water all over me. Please. I don't think that's me. There's the worm. Bream and worms do go together. Oh, 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 oh. No, nothing. I've already seen this one people, it makes up for perch. Look at the oh if I get it in what I think it is. It's back winding me. It's got my other lines, picked up the loose line, I pulled that one in out of the way. <laughs> oh, 
a tench. That is a classic with the with the worms like that. There you go, a nice tench. Wow, what a session. What a session. Let's get him back. Oh, just loaded up again as I was sorting the tench out. Got to be a carp. I've got the camera in my mouth. And you go out there in the middle. Whoa, big fish. That's a biggie. Just makes you think, how good could I make myself if I had another cameraman? Just, I fished and they do all the filming and I don't have to bother doing it. How easy would that be? I've got another one there guys another decent common he's covered me in all slime and everything water I don't understand it and he was standing right next to me when I got the take um, neither of us really understood how come they're going crazy why is that I've used hardly any bait got a few worms that's ridiculous but acceptable isn't it? It's all acceptable. So I'm talking with Andy there. <laughs> As I'm talking with him, the reels, the rods nearly going in, the reels back winding like a washing machine. Yeah, it's like a food mixer going around. Even he couldn't believe it. It's amazing. And just on the edge of the lilies. Majority coming on this right hand one, though we don't know why, and neither of us know why the fish are going crazy. He said, Even the guys in the match are over there saying, What's that guy you look, look, they're saying, What's that guy you using over there? I'm using about two week old worms given to me by Dave Roberts out of the tackle kiosk. Look, they're all stretched and that, but they're still alive. And I, and I, I was so little ground, but I can't almost afford to throw it in. It's, it's just ridiculous. They must be just this corner of the lake that's on the feet. I'm gonna have to come back here because. Painting the obvious down there might be a, a, a good place, place to try float fishing. Well, try float fishing. I think you float fish anywhere. Look, there's bubbles coming up there this time. I can see bubbles on the left hand one. Now, so occasionally, perch will throw up bubbles, single ones that pop, but uh, more likely to be carp. Tench of the fine little fizzy, foamy bubbles. What a session! I cannot believe an hour's fishing like this. I don't know what to say people, I'm on number 11 and it's all big fish, not small fish I'm getting lots of tweaky bites which I'm guessing a small perch just take my bobbin off hair grip guys, painted white, Poundland six of result, bent rod 
Look at those. I should have bought the scales. I should have bought the scales. It's just the way it is, Graham. Always. Uh, the way bag, not the scales. I suppose I could wait in that net, but can I be bothered because I want to fish? Wrist is giving out now. A 22 catfish the other evening in about four hours, three or four hours. Just unbelievable scrapping. All catfish make these seem a bit like bleak fishing. This one's got a nice pinwheel action on it, it's going round and round in circles. Like the tuna, go round in circles. He wants to change direction now. Oh, that's a nice fish. That might be the biggest of the trip. That is a nice fish. That is a good one. I've got three. Oh, that's the biggest, guys. That is the biggest. That is the biggest. Easily. 13s, maybe. That is the biggest one to date. That's a good one. That is a nice fish. Wife's phone. I've got one more hour and then I'm in trouble. I've got a bream on, guys, and I've got a beeper down here. I've got a bream on, <laughs> and a beeper there, like that one. I'll go there and show you what's pulling back a bit. Probably a small perch. Well, I've definitely got a fish on here, and I've seen it flash, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a bream. Very nearly out of bait. He's in. They seem to be growing in here. They like that deep water, that's the thing. And you think of some of the Irish locks, they're all deep as well. Like it's just, just nicked. He's just nicked in there. That's a nice looker. Be nice when they get bigger and they feed through the window really as well. Hard to believe people, I've actually got the perch. <laughs> A typical schoolboy's perch. So, right species, it's a little fin up, look. <laughs> as we did when we were school kids, absolutely gagged on a big hook and a big worm. One little perch. It's his granddaddy that I would have liked to catch, but it's still a perch. I'm actually just, I'm free lining if I can get it right on the honey pot and then draw it back into the swim. There's a bite on that one then. And I've actually been touch ledging it with it across my fingers like this. I just felt that tugging of the perch. Of course, I didn't know it was a perch at the time. Eh? And I watched the bow in the line where it enters the water. So I've got two indications. I watched the bow in the line and I've got the line across my fingers. Just a sort of amusing way of fishing. And very effective if the fish were on the bite. There's the tap. Small one. I'll tell you what I do feel. I feel a barbell trip coming, guys. If the fish are feeding like this here in the lakes. Bit of rain to freshen them up might be worth a look up uh, River Seven or the River Y for barbel. Not done it this year, been so low. I've got a fish on people just packing up. I dropped it right down by my feet. I saw a swirl, dropped it down there. Off it went. I think it's a big fish.
I'm not sure this is going to fit in the landing net. Well, I won't be giving this one a kiss of life, put it like that. It's a big fish, but mm. no. <laughs> wow, that is a big one. Number 12. I can ease possibly 13s. 13 might be a bit more, but say somewhere between 12 and 14. God, one more cast. I've got about five worms left. I lost another one. That would have been 13, so I'm actually on 12 carp. Played it for a while, lost it. I'm getting perch bites on this, but they have slowed up. I will say they have slowed up. Yeah, it's a perch bite. Small perch, not big perch. I caught one down there. One of the carp. But what I find is most bizarre, most strange. The way I've used absolute minimal, just pellets of ground, but you saw I had and a handful of worms and the fish were on the bite big time as soon as I got it. I don't understand it. Gratefully accepted though. So people, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm going to come back here, have a go with the centre pin and the float fishing really close down here. I know the guys are in the match. Uh, I think they're weighing in now. I thought they did a 35 and a half pounds. was one weight. I don't know what uh, would normally win a weight here quite quite a lot. My hour extension with wifey, who's going out later, or was going out later. Um, I said if her friend doesn't show up, she's got a delayed flight. I'll treat her to a pub meal. I know how to butter them up, you see. And next time I can stay even later. That's the theory. It doesn't always work, guys, does it? Look, look, look. There's a little bite there. So the big perch didn't come, but well pleased. The most busy three, four, five, six. Busiest. I've been here three hours now. Two hours. We're manic. We'll see you in the next show. Let's hope it as lucky as this one. There we go, there we go, there we go. Nothing. Let's pack up.